First, Elon Musk, the founder of PayPal, chairman of SolarCity, CEO of SpaceX and Tesla Motors. He shows off his brand new bet on the future, the Tesla sedan. Zero to 60 for uh, the standard model. How fast? Roughly zero to 60 in about six seconds, which is pretty fast. And then the performance version is zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. It's definitely faster than a, than a Porsche 911 Carrera. So all touch screen, just like an iPad. Right, and you can go full screen as well. Uh, and it's pulling off Google Maps. It has offline navigation as well as Google Maps. Radio Luanda. Wow, you're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to this all the what? time. What? They're listening to Nirvana? Listen to Nirvana. <laughs> I love it. And then the typical charge uh, takes how long to fully recharge a battery? Well, with the supercharger, you can actually recharge in less than an hour. But, but that's mostly going to be useful for intercity trips. At home, it's it's fine to charge overnight. So no big deal. Plus, you're rarely charging a full yeah, charge. You're charging just a, a you know, marginal charge. And the range, I mean, the biggest concern, obviously, about these vehicles is range anxiety at least has been traditionally in electric cars. So the range here uh, for the standard Model S is what? So there's three ranges, 160 miles, 230 miles, and a 300 mile range car. So um, is, is this the whole interview, by the way? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I told you, just a couple of things. They'll splice it, then we'll quickly do it. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, Elon, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. The future of electric cars, I mean, is it, is it pushing the envelope of imagination and focusing on design, uh, focusing on technology that's going to be the key to scale electric vehicles in this country and around the world? Tesla and, and, and other car, car companies need to make uh, great electric cars at, at a price that is comparable to gasoline cars, and then they will sell, and that's it. As easy as that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard to do that, but, but that's what needs to be done. Um, and so the, with the Model S, we have kind of a, a, a mid-price, mid-volume mid car, um, and then uh, we, we have an extension of that platform, which is the Model X, that's, the, that are, that's our SUV, and that'll come out uh, in a couple of years. And then uh, the, the vehicle after that will be um, our sort of high-volume, high lower-priced car that'll be kind of in around $30,000. And all of these being produced in California, in the United States, by yeah. definition. Right. So this is all domestic manufacturing, mm -hmm. American jobs, yeah. and American ingenuity and innovation, right? Yes, yeah, and, and we, we really are doing manufacturing. Um, actually, we had our annual shareholder meeting, and I showed the video of, of literally we have coils of aluminum and um, and pla you know sheets of plastic coming in and cars coming out. So we do real manufacturing. It's not like we're just sort of sticking a few bits together. What do you think is the future of electric vehicles? Is are we are we going to be a hybrid nation? Because there seems to be great adaptation of hybrids, or at least adoption of hybrids. Right. Uh, but as you said, there's not a lot of choices on the electric front. And Chevy Volt's got its issues, and the Leaf and the, the Toyota RAV4, which actually uses some of the tech, uh, technology that Tesla right. has advanced. What do you see the future? And in extension of that question or consideration, is it the battery that's the greatest limit, limiting uh, force in terms of larger commercialization? The battery is the single biggest contributor. Um, Although the battery, the battery sets kind of the energy bank, and then depending on how efficient the, the electric motor is and the rest of the drivetrain and the drag coefficient, basically all the uses of energy um, will set the range. And so for the, the Model S, for example, has the lowest drag coefficient of, of any premium sedan. It may actually be lower than any car. We're, 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 we're going to calibrate it in, in, in the wind tunnels, but it's got a really good uh, drag coefficient, which is important for the these highway are range. These are safe cars. Yes, with the Model S, we're we're aiming to have the, the safest car um, of, of of any of any vehicle. So the the crumple zone in the front is like about three times longer than a normal crumple zone because there's no no big engine block there, which is really good good for a, if you have a high speed like a head-on collision or something, right. and you need to absorb that impact over a long distance. And and then we have the the, the lowest side pole intrusion because we have we have to have this um, ultra strong extrusion that runs along the side. Um, we, we have double the roof crush capability of any car, so it, the, the car can handle four times its own weight on its roof. And if you were uh, if you were advising GM, some of these big three auto manufacturers, Ford and others, you say stay the course on electric vehicles. Ab absolutely. If, if they don't, they they are going to lose market share dramatically in the future. And hybrids uh, are like amphibians; they're sort of half and half, not good enough, part yeah. of an evolution. Um, well, it, yeah, I think like a. A, a mild hybrid where it's just sort of dealing with the stop-start, you know, like the, the current version of the, the Prius is fine because that does, that does have an efficiency improvement. Um, but, but the plug-in hybrid, I, I think, is probably not, not the best way to go. That's sort of like the Volt. I mean, I applaud any effort in the direction of electric vehicles. It's just that I, I, do, I do think 
if you, if you go purely electric or purely gasoline, then you, you're able to make the best gasoline car, the best electric car, and if you, if you kind of split the baby, it, it, it does not end up being as good. And when we come back, why Elon Musk wants to go to Mars and how he plans to make it happen after the break. The spacecraft launch isn't from NASA. It's a new generation of space exploration and travel, private enterprise. And at the forefront of this new venture is SpaceX. It was founded by Elon Musk 12 years ago with his own $100 million personal investment. And just this spring, his first spacecraft, the Dragon, made it into orbit with a perfect recovery at the end of May. But SpaceX isn't competing with NASA. In fact, NASA has awarded several multi-million dollar contracts to SpaceX so far. Perhaps an ideal example of public-private partnership. Here's Elon to explain. SpaceX is going uh, gangbusters now. You've just yeah, had a successful see, launch see on May well. 31st, yeah. um, which was the first commercial craft to go up to orbit and actually make its way down here in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, what's your you know, what's your sense of where you are? What's your concern as you yeah, as you grow this company? SpaceX is, is doing really well. Um, really, uh, we we had a successful mission to the space station. We were able to go back there, there and back again. Um, it, it really exceeded our, our, our great best expectations. And, and now, now we're going to go do a whole bunch more missions like that. Um, we'll also be launching satellites, broadcasting communication satellites, weather, mapping, that kind of thing. Um, in probably three years or so, we'll be launching astronauts to the space station. Mm. And so we'll take over from the Russians, because in, in the meantime, the Russians are, are ca transporting American astronauts. So what happened? Last year, the space shuttle uh, was shuttered right, uh, right. last summer. So that ended, from America's perspective, our dominance. We don't even have the capacity outside of your prospects and some others that are in your field to even send folks to the space station. We actually have to use Russian That's right. technology. Yeah. So now NASA is looking to the private sector. This is the next era of space exploration and cargo and astronaut travel and the like. Uh, you have contracted with NASA for what, 12 cargo runs? We have 12 missions ahead, yeah. And they've invested a huge amount of time, energy, and money into your capacity privately to do what government, federal government, American government, NASA has been doing for a generation. That's really a, a huge precedent because historically NASA has, has done the, the launch vehicle development and operation under kind of a you know, good government model and outsourced it to private sector for the first time. Um, and, um, and, we're, and we're fortunate enough that NASA, NASA picked us. Um, and, and I have to obviously give a lot of credit here to, to, to NASA because I really wouldn't have been able to start SpaceX without with the great work that NASA has done, nor would we have come as far without without their help. So, and what were you thinking? I mean, this um, is a decade in the making, SpaceX, right? Yeah. But you didn't you didn't come out of a background in, and you know you didn't come out of NASA. You didn't come it's out of a background in space. Improbable outcome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're, 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 <laughs> how did I mean? I mean, and, and the reason I, I frame, I mean, from PayPal and the internet to changing the way you know we look at the consumption and production of energy and transportation, solar. Uh, and now space. Uh, what's the natural connection? What was the inspiration 10 years ago or so to, to start SpaceX? I guess I got a little disappointed that we'd, we'd been to the moon in, in 1969 um, and, then, and then we were in, only able to go to low Earth orbit and, and then of course there's the shuttle retiring, now we can't even do that. So that, that's, that's not a good trajectory. Downward um, trend. It's a downward trend. trend, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you know we're so used to technology imp just sort of naturally improving, but it doesn't naturally improve. It improves because l people work really hard to make it improve. Um, and you have new companies, and, and they, they compete, and they, they try to make things better. Um, and so that's what I thought was perhaps missing in the space arena, because it's, it's it's such a high capital endeavor. It's a very difficult technology problem. So there just were, there was a lack of new entrants into into the space business, um, and so the it was kind of dominated by. Monopoly, duopoly situations, um, and uh, and there was just not a forcing function for innovation. Um, so, what, so what made you think? And I mean this sincerely. What made you think you can make it work? What was the driving I, energy behind that? Uh, no, I, I I thought I would fail. But you thought it would be a noble failure. If so, if some, something's important enough, it's still worth doing, even if the odds of, su of success are low. And you put a lot of your own personal wealth into the company. Yeah, I, I, I put most of the money that I made from PayPal into SpaceX, and the, the remainder <laughs> went into Tesla and Solar City. <laughs> so you, you put it all on the line. Yeah, actually, I had to borrow money from from friends to pay the rent. Literally. Literally. <laughs> yeah, it's so kind of ridiculous. <laughs> you're just not a guy that's going to sit on the beach and 
you know, watch the waves come crashing in. No, um, it was it was a narrow thing there in 2008. Almost all three companies almost died. Because they all were founded uh, in decade of 2000, 2002, three, four, Tesla, and then yeah, um, and Solar right. City in what 2006 roughly. Yeah, approximately. Yeah. Um, yeah, SpaceX was 2002. Tesla's technically 2003, but but really more more, more like 2004, and then Solar City 2006. So like roughly a two-year gap, yeah. um, and uh, uh, and then in, and then in, in 2008 uh, it, it, um, we had the third uh, launch of SpaceX fail. Um, the Tesla financing round fell apart because the world economy went into a tailspin, um, and trying to trying to find funding for for a car company in late 2008 while GM and Chrysler are going bankrupt is <laughs> not not fun um, and then uh, and then solar city had a deal with with Morgan Stanley and Morgan Stanley couldn't honor the deal because they were trying to figure out how to go not how not to go bankrupt Wow um, so it was it was super tough and what, what's the, what, what's your reflective lesson learned in that process do you feel you're over leveraged in the context of, of not just financially but just spread too thin in terms of your passions and endeavors um, or, I mean, in hindsight, you can say it all worked out because Solar City is doing as well or better than ever. Yeah. Tesla's rolling out its second iteration, and of course, SpaceX just had not its third f or fourth failure, but its first big, big success. Uh, right. Ab recently. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, th things are going really well right now. Um, I, I, but it, but it's worth making the point that um, that they, they really weren't always going going well, and there were some extraordinarily tough times. So what did you learn from that? What's the, what's the, what's the takeaway from that? Were you stretched oh, I too thin? I, I learned I've got a high pain threshold. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> that's for sure. Man, I, I never thought I was like somebody who could, who could have a nervous breakdown, but on, um, on the Sunday before Christmas on 2008, I was like, man, this is, about, <laughs> this is pretty close. And then the next, the, on, the, on the, the Monday, NASA called and said well, that SpaceX had won a, a $1.6 billion contract um, so I was like, yes, that would change things. <laughs> that would, and then we had to close the Tesla financing round, um, and and it closed on the the twenty fourth, like a few days later. And if it didn't close, then we, we would have gone bankrupt. Uh, wow! After Christmas, so so we certainly have um, the uh, Department of Energy um, and, and the government to thank um, a, a, in terms of lending lending a helping hand. That was really re really great. But it is important for p people in general to appreciate that it, it wasn't it wasn't a taxpayer bailout as as is sometimes portrayed in the in the remaining press. moment. SpaceX I is this the beginning of the end of NASA or is NASA going to go through a completely different evolution and it's a new phase of NASA in partnerships with private commercial entities like yourself, SpaceX, and others that may enter in the same field. I think we are entering a new era of space exploration. There is an extremely important role for NASA because uh, NASA uh, creates these, these um, unique scientific instruments, things like the Hubble, uh, the Mars probes. Um, NASA operates the space station. Um, but, but I think that as far as tra uh, space transportation uh, goes, I think that's, that's going to become increasingly um, sort of increasingly commercial in nature. And when you mean uh, which is a, is a good thing. You know. Does that mean those watching in five? 10, 15 years, we'll be able to do not just suborbital, but actual orbital trips. Yeah, absolutely. That you really believe that? Yes, I, I, I do, absolutely. I, and I think that, that's quite likely at this point. Yeah. And you've also been so bold as to suggest Mars. Forget yeah. the moon, that's 69. You're making <laughs> the argument in the future, we're Mars. We, we ought to aim to make uh, life multi-planetary, to, to have a self-sustaining civilization on Mars as well. And, and that's not because I think Earth is going to hell in a handbasket or something. I mean, it, I, let's actually multi-planetary for a reason. Um, it, it's that I, I think we want to become a space-faring civilization, get out there and explore the stars, and and that's a really exciting, inspiring future, um, much more more than a future where we're forever confined to Earth. Um, and, and I think it's particularly uh, particularly for, for for the United States. And the United States is a nation of explorers. I mean, people came here from somewhere else. Um, so we're a distillation of the exploratory spirit of humanity. Um, so if, if, if any country is to be excited about such things, it, it is this country. And for those critics out there that believe NASA and the Obama administration to some extent made a huge mistake by supporting uh, and basically subcontracting some of these uh, <laughs> right. efforts, uh, what do you say? I, I find some of this opposition so ironic. This is extremely free market. I, I mean, what, what could be more free market than... than doing competitive commercial contracts? And that there, there's been some opposition from... from so some parts of the Republican Party for what 
is arguably one of the most Republican things that the president has done. But I, I think some of that some of that opposition has has waned in in the wake of recent successes. You'll be uh, on a capsule, the Dragon, to Mars when? Well, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that 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 Mars trips could occur sometime in the next ten to twenty years. Um, I'd say ten is probably optimistic, but I would be. Um, I was surprised if it's 20. And you'll be leading by example, I imagine, first in line? I would like to go. I would like to go. I'd, I'd like to, I think it'd be great to be born on, on, on Earth and to die on Mars. Um, you know, just, just not at the point of impact. <laughs> <laughs> that. Thanks, Elon, right. for being here.